In this V-Rising Early Access Overview video, we're going to take a deep dive into the survival elements and crafting system, gameplay loop, and combat of the new gothic open-world vampire survival RPG developed and published by Stunlock Studios. Who doesn't want to create their own castle while slaying and feeding off creatures in the dead of night? I know I do. V-Rising was released into Early Access on the 17th of May for PC for $19.99 USD. Since then, the game has had very positive reviews on Steam. In fact, it has reached 150,000 concurrent players in the first week thus far. This is a sponsored post. Please note sponsored posts are only sponsoring coverage. Our opinions on the game are our own and not affected by any business relationships with developers or publishers. V Rising Early Access is an open world survival RPG where unlike other games of the same genre, you play as a vampire with the intention of raising your castle from the ground up. To do so, you must gather materials, hunt bosses, and raid bandit camps. But it's not as simple and straightforward as it sounds. Because of who you are, you have certain limitations like getting burnt by the sun or being unable to carry silver, otherwise you receive damage over time. These restrictions are some of the reasons why the game is very fun and challenging at the same time, especially if you're playing with friends in PvP. In terms of combat, View Rising is heavily inspired by Sunlock Studios' previous title known as Battle Right. All of your abilities are skill shots, meaning that you need to aim them carefully to hit targets because you can't lock onto them. Even the animation of the basic counterattack ability that you have by default has been lifted directly from that game. Overall, combat is very snappy and responsive, allowing for a high skill ceiling. V Rising is often compared to Valheim because they exist in the same open world survival genre. However, that's the only similarity both games share. Valheim is built on free exploration and the sandbox experience with little to no guidance on what you should be doing next. On the other hand, V-Rising with its quests nudge players in the right direction in terms of what to build or focus on, making it much more guided in terms of overall experience. V-Rising is set in the gothic world of Ardoran. Several centuries ago, as a powerful vampire, you once ruled over the world, but then an uprising led by mankind sent you into hiding in your coffin. You then wake up in your weakened form to reclaim glory once again by rebuilding your army and empire. There are several game modes in V-Rising that will initially have you choose between PvE or PvP. In PvE, the risk of losing the items you're carrying isn't too high since you don't fight against other bloodthirsty vampires. This is a decent mode to try out if you're playing solo or if you want to learn the mechanics of the game with minimal danger. Should you want to experience more thrill and heart-pounding combat, then PvP is the way to go. You have the option to join a clan comprised of several members or to play with a friend. Here you only have a few minutes of respite as you're learning the basics before you become vulnerable to other players who are on the hunt. Alternatively, if you wish to challenge yourself even more, then you can go for full loot PvP where you also drop your precious gear when you die, rather than only receiving a loss in item durability as default. In terms of visuals, V Rising looks, sounds, and feels polished for the most part even in early access. There are occasional stutters, but it isn't game breaking. From the bold colors and textures of every structure you build to the various creatures you encounter on your hunts, they are equally eye-catching and unique from one another, making them easily identifiable. The game even has AMD FSR to upscale the graphics and increase FPS as needed. And despite being an open-world survival RPG, it never feels lonely or isolating because of how densely populated the landscape as a whole is. Every inch of space is utilized to the player's benefit, whether they pertain to the resources you need to gather or camps you have to raid. When it comes to audio, V Rising's somber background music, as well as the exhilarating loud beats and sound effects in combat, are some of the things you can look forward to. These are equally padded out to create a cohesive environment filled with brooding dangers lurking in the shadows, thereby making the overall experience that much more exciting. For only $19.99 USD, with all of these features readily available, what more could you want? In V Rising Early Access, you are immediately introduced to quests, which are located on the upper left hand corner of your screen, that will point you in the right direction and show you how everything works. Following these until you start constructing your base is crucial to determine the raw materials you need from the get-go. Similar to other survival games, you're going to have to chop trees as well as mine stones and ores. You will then go back to your base to craft structures that can be processed and then used to build specific items like equipment, castle walls, and floors, to name a few. Character creation has several options that you can tweak to fully customize your vampire. These include body type, skin tone, face type, eye and hair color, hair style, facial features, and accessories. You'll be able to freely change your look in the future once you construct a gothic mirror, oddly enough, in your castle. The Rising Early Access features a classless system, which means that there are no set classes to follow. Instead, your build will depend on the techniques you acquire from the weapons you wield, the abilities and powers you get from special bosses, and the blood type you want to focus on. Let's start with weapon techniques. For every weapon you craft on the bench, whether it's a sword or a crossbow, you unlock certain techniques specific to them. 
For instance, the Hunter's Crossbow lets you fire a single arrow that deals great damage. It also allows you to execute multiple shots into the air to land on several enemies. Switching from one weapon to the next is effortless because it can be done with hotkeys. Next you have the Ability Selection, which features five basic ability categories, namely Blood, Unholy, Illusion, Chaos, and Frost. Blood focuses on abilities that protect or buff your allies. Unholy lets you summon the undead, Illusion sends out decoys, Chaos is mostly focused on dealing magic damage and Chaos Burn status effect, and Frost is like Chaos, but you chill your target. Note that you are able to change any of these without any cost. You also have powers that allow you to heal yourself and expose your vein for other colleagues to restore a portion of their HP. You can even transform into a wolf for faster traversal. You gain these abilities and powers every time you hunt after V-Blood carriers. Each of them provides you with unique skills and structures. For example, if you have leveled up your gear high enough, defeating and drinking the blood of Polora the Feywalker will reward you with Spectral Wolf and Veil of Illusion abilities. Additionally, you will also be able to create a Vampire Waygate in your castle to easily teleport to another location. As you go on hunts to defeat and feed on creatures to survive, you inherit certain perks that further enhance your build. Should you run out of blood, you will take huge damage over time, which will quickly kill you. However, you can't just feed on whomever you like, especially if you're aiming to get the most out of the bonuses you receive. For instance, if you have recently consumed the blood of a warrior, you want to hunt for stronger warriors who have higher blood quality. This means that you will reap more benefits. Rather than only acquiring increased physical power, the cooldowns of your weapon skills will decrease as well. If you accidentally feed on an animal who is passing by, your blood type will change from a warrior to that of a creature. You instead receive bonuses pertaining to additional movement speed and damage reduction. There are a lot of blood types in the game, so experimenting with them early on and noting these down will help you identify the best perks for your character. Another aspect of V-Rising Early Access that makes it an amazing survival game is the day and night cycle. As a vampire, you'll be burnt to a crisp if you stand too long under the sun, so ideally, you would want to finish your hunts at night while you're not as vulnerable. During the day, you can still collect resources, but it is advisable to only cover a smaller perimeter, preferably one near your base, until you get a stronger grasp of the game's mechanics. Remember that you'll have to stay in the shadows to survive. The level of detail is simply astounding because the location of these shadows changes depending on the time of day so staying in one spot will most likely get you killed. Furthermore, there is a special Blood Moon event which occurs infrequently. Here, you will receive a 20% buff to your current blood type, as well as an increase in your movement speed, allowing you to take down V-Bloods more efficiently. The world of Ardoran is big, to say the least. It is comprised of sprawling vistas filled with multiple resources together with patrolling NPCs and creatures. As such, you can't help but get lost while you're out exploring because more often than not, Something will instantly catch your eye, whether it's an enticing victim to change your blood type, or a copper ore waiting to be mined. What's more is that the map of the game is highly informative since it shows points of interest with their corresponding resources. Gone are the days when you needed to constantly Google a resource node because it's not clearly stated anywhere else. Despite how fluid exploration feels, V Rising's top-down perspective may feel restricting for some, especially in the realm of survival games. The reason is that you don't directly observe the environment as you are supposed to see them eye to eye. There is no element of surprise when you travel from one area to the next because you know exactly where you will go. Unlike in Valheim, where you cultivate a keen sense of scale since you can literally see your surroundings and how far or big they are from you, in V Rising you only understand the game's scale when you view the map due to how expansively it is depicted. When it comes to combat, V Rising Early Access continues to deliver. Despite the risks involved in going on multiple raids and hunts on a single night, encounters are heart-poundingly well executed whether you're fighting against enemy AIs or players alike. What makes this better is how responsive your weapon techniques and abilities are together with their respective controls. Everything feels cohesive and smooth. To add to this, you don't simply whack your weapons against foes. Instead, you have to figure out the right combination of skills and the best position to execute them to be able to defeat them efficiently. Based on experience, it's better to go for a ranged build so you can take advantage of the space around you in terms of evading incoming attacks. This also helps in properly positioning your character to safely cast skills. In PvP most especially, I couldn't shake the feeling that other vampires were watching from a distance, ready to pounce and kill me on sight, and loot all my stuff. To be honest, this happened a couple of times throughout my playthrough. Even if I was able to keep my gear, albeit with lower durability, I lost the resource items I accumulated from hunting a V-Blood and raiding several bandit camps. But alas, this is all part of the thrill. After dying, you respawn from your coffin, or you can opt to choose a specific vampire waygate from the map. Although the game is skill-based, equipment also plays a huge part in winning fights because the higher your gear level is, the more bonuses you receive, including health and physical power boosts. 
In V-Rising Early Access, you start off by crafting the Castle Heart, which is the lifeblood of your castle. You'll need to constantly feed this with Blood Essence to prevent it from decaying, otherwise your base will be annihilated. Since your resources are initially limited to lumber and plant fiber, you can only construct wooden floors and walls. During this time, it's important to create one or two mist braziers to block out the sun. As you progress in the game and complete quests, you gain access to other types of structures such as the sawmill to process lumber into planks and the furnace to convert copper ore into copper ingots. Eventually, you'll be able to build your very own castle walls and floors, which will automatically put a roof over your head. You can then dismantle the mist braziers to get back a portion of the resources you initially spent on them. What you have to be mindful of when it comes to the structures you craft is that you need to satisfy certain requirements to create a highly efficient production line. For instance, with the grinder, you have to make sure that it is placed in a castle room with a matching workshop floor beneath it. Once you complete it, you are able to generate respective products faster while spending lesser resources, making it critical to plan out the design of your castle and its rooms. Final Thoughts V Rising Early Access is an open-world vampire survival RPG where efficient planning, constant feeding, and experimenting with abilities and powers are the keys to your survival. What makes this game stand out above the rest, in my opinion, is that it doesn't take itself too seriously in spite of its rather dark tone. Playing as a vampire while dealing with familiar tropes such as staying hidden in the shadows and voraciously feeding off any passing victim simply feels right in the world of Ardoran. If you're looking for a survival RPG to sink your teeth into that's worth your time and money, then you might want to check out V-Rising. For $19.99 USD or EU, V-Rising features beautiful and detailed visuals, exhilarating and fast-paced combat, deep crafting and a base building system, and multiple build variations even in the early access alone. If you're going to pick up the game, be sure to use our link below to help support the channel. For those of you out there who are playing V-Rising, what are your thoughts on the game? Are you enjoying it so far? Let us know in the comments below.